Hey, 49er fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today, let's do a little uh, education in terms of the 49ers free agent prospects. Listen, every single offseason, there are plenty of different names that people are like, oh, could the Niners sign this guy? Could the Niners sign that guy? So, over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to go through some position groups in the 2021 free agent class and talk about some guys that maybe you heard of, maybe you haven't, but could be potential landing spots or pieces the 49ers could go ahead and add to, you know, fill a hole in a starting role or a depth role at the same time. So, we start with the cornerback situation, the most important, I mean, honestly position right now in terms of free agency going into 2021 for our 49ers because everybody is an unrestricted free agent in the entire cornerback depth chart for the 49ers all six are potentially able to leave if they get better offers now I expect them to bring someone back I think they could go ahead and you know sign one two Verrett maybe Sherman maybe K1 Williams who knows but they could also turn to free agency and that's the point of this video right here at the Niners we know have about 20 million dollars currently in cap space a little bit over that's like 21 22 million dollars they can all obviously you know improve that by cutting some people or obviously changing some uh, contracts around restructuring some deals but right now they do have a lot of people who are going to be free agents, and there's no way they can re-sign all of their cornerbacks. So, just to remind you, as you know, Richard Sherman, K1 Williams, Jason Verrett, those are the top three big names, and I think Sherman is going to receive a lot of interest outside of San Francisco. Someone might offer him more money, who knows? But you also have Killer Witherspoon, Dante Johnson, Jamar Chase. I mean, you have a lot, or sorry, Jamar Taylor. You have a lot of uh, cornerbacks that you not just need to re-sign from a starting role, but from a depth role as well. And so, when you draft somebody, yes, I think it's a real possibility, but can you attack them in free agency and try and re-sign some other guys who are not currently on the roster that's essentially where we're going to go in today's videos we already talked about so of course Sherman is the main focus here on the guys that you know maybe you resign maybe you don't I think it's going to come down to if he wants to stay in San Francisco, he'll take a little bit of a pay cut. If he wants to go get one more big contract, he'll go somewhere else to become a Jet or, you know, some other team that wants a cornerback. Who really knows? Question for you guys here as we get started. How many of the 49ers' own cornerbacks do you guys think they're going to go ahead and resign? Are they going to resign one of them? None of them? All six? Let me know what you guys think down below. Be a pinned comment. Get your answers in right now. Okay, so the big name that we'll start with is the, also the most, or the least likely, I would say, and that's Patrick Peterson. So we talked about Patrick Peterson a couple of days ago. I think it was like, what, a week, week, week and a half ago. He hasn't officially been released by the Arizona Cardinals, but he's not expected to be re-signed by the Arizona Cardinals. Now, he was asked about this, and he called it a, quote, dirty rumor. But at 30 years old, and he's been struggling the past couple of years, he hasn't been elite in terms of overall grade in, what, three-ish years based on, you know, the stats as you go ahead and look at them. I think he's still a really good cornerback, but this is a guy who will be a free agent. It looks like it's going to go ahead and happen. And so you add him to the list of potential names that you could go ahead and sign. The problem with Patrick Peterson is he's no longer that number one shutdown cornerback that we all remember him as, like one of the top three corners in the league. He's just no longer there. I mean, Pro Football Focus ranked him outside the top 40 each of the last two seasons. So he has not been at the elite level of play. Doesn't mean he can go ahead and get back to that. My question overall for Patrick Peterson and any other aging star cornerback we'll talk about a couple more here on our list is do you want to win right so you want to make a lot of money you want to go somewhere it's going to pay you like the number one cornerback you think that you still are or does Peterson want to win and come to San Francisco and pick a little bit of a pay cut and probably just you know not make that much money but be a starter on a team that I think all of us consider to be really good in terms of the overall defense and probably set up to have a really good 2021 season so it's up to him and up to anybody other free agents that want to come to San Francisco right you would go to San Francisco not because they're going to offer you the most money they don't have a lot of money to go an offer, but because they're going to have plenty of chances to win football games, and honestly, that is what I would do. So we'll start with Patrick Peterson here. Should the 49ers sign Patrick Peterson? Type Y number low for yes. Type N down below for no. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed. Big red subscribe button down below. We're approaching 35,000 subs here on the channel as we keep you up to date on the latest free agency news and rumors. And more videos like this educating you on who is a free agent who potentially could become the next 49er in the 2021 season. All right. Another veteran name that you will recognize before we get into some of the names you might not recognize if you're not like a diehard NFL fan, A.J. Boye is officially a free agent. He was traded to Denver last offseason from the Texans. He was considered one of the best corners in the league just a couple of years ago. But the Broncos cut him after one season. He had PED violation. He had some injuries. Overall, he missed a total of nine games in 2020. So you can look at that and say, all right, he only played seven games in 2020. No interceptions. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't that good. So maybe get him on a big discount and hope he turns out to be great. Or you go back to as early as 2017 when he had six interceptions with the Houston Texans and say he just needs to stay healthy and not you know, have a PED violation, come back, and he'll be a really good player. So I expect him to go ahead and get a lot less than the $11 million Denver was going to go ahead and pay him, and he, to me, would be a great option on the outside 
if he is at a point in his career where he's expecting to take a pay cut based on the 2020 performance. Like, it bodes well that he had a very bad 2020 if you want to re-sign him for cheap and hope he turns out to be as good as he once was. Now, I've said before, I think the 49ers should go ahead and draft a cornerback. I'm a big Patrick Sertan, Caleb Farley guy. You guys know that. But do you guys think they should draft or sign a quarter a, a cornerback? I would do both, but you just, just, just pick one. Type D down below for draft. Type S down below for sign. All right, some other names here. How about Mackenzie Alexander, who, again, you don't watch the Cincinnati Bengals in 2020. You know, neither did I. I'm not going to blame you. But he, of course, is a free agent and a name you might not fully recognize, but is a possibility on the outside. Now, he missed three games due to injury in 2020, but he primarily plays in the slot. So here's a great example of a replacement for Kwan Williams. If Williams gets a better offer, he is the best and really only slot cornerback right now the 49ers have on their roster. The good thing about Mackenzie Alexander, unlike Kwan Williams, he's 27 years old and still had a decent 2020. Now, Williams had a good 2020, but he's 30 years old, so age comes into a factor there. But a nickel replacement at corner is a real need, especially especially if K1 Williams goes ahead and leaves because they're highly underrated in the National Football League, but they're extremely important because you got wide receivers moving all around in different formations, bunch spreads in terms of just coming up in the slot. You get to go one-on-one, -on -one, and Williams has been great about that. Alexander is a good name to go ahead and throw on the list of potential replacements if you need to do that once we get to start a free agency. Now, a name who has had a complete resurrection, I would say. We throw him on the list here is Ronald Darby. Remember him in Philadelphia in 2017 and the Super Bowl team the Eagles had? He never was really that elite. They signed him from the Bills or traded for him from the Bills to beat an elite cornerback and had up and down a couple years in Philly and then had a really bad final year and they got rid of him. Well, he signed a one-year deal this past offseason with Washington and... I mean, resurrected his career. I mean, he was the leader on what was a top pass defense for the Redskins, or the, excuse me, the Washington football team at some point, multiple points in the 2020 season. They were really, really good. Darby has said he wants to go ahead and end up back with the Washington football team, saying, quote, I hope and pray I end up back home. Of course, is Washington. But at 27 years old, again, here's a guy who bet on himself, signed a cheap one-year deal with the Washington football team, and now could go back out to free agency and command a lot more money. He has been a, I mean, I'm telling you, last year, really, really good, and a big reason why, yes, Washington struggled offensively, but he was a big reason why their defense kept them in so many football games, and eventually, you know, they went ahead and won their division. All right, would you rather have Mackenzie Alexander or Ronald Darby? Again, both are 27 year old, years old. I want to see the comments here. Type MA for Mackenzie Alexander or type RD for Ronald Darby. All right, more names here. How about Xavier Rhodes? Now, you think about Xavier Rhodes, what, what, like, what do you think? I think Vikings, right? Now, I think age Viking cornerback. And so you think about the name and you go, wait a second, wasn't he like really bad in 2019 with the Minnesota Vikings? The answer is yes. And he's gotten up there in age as well. He's 30 years old. However, much like Ronald Darby, signed a one-year deal with the Colts in 2020 and was fantastic. I mean, was really, really good. And he's not going to return to the Colts, according to multiple reports, because he wants north of $9 million a year. So again, an expensive guy, but for a reason. He was the third highest graded red zone cornerback in 2020 and really is one of the bigger, more uh, physical outside corners that can really get up in people's face and, you know, defend a guy like a DK Metcalf, who you've got to play Robert Woods, you know, twice a year in the NFC West. This is the same thing as Patrick Peterson, though. I think he's better, honestly, than Patrick Peterson, at least based on 2020. The problem here is, does Rhodes want to win or does he want to make a lot of money? If he wants to do both, then San Francisco's not the place to go because they don't have a lot of money to go ahead and re-sign him. But if they want to go ahead or he wants to go ahead and just win and just you know win baby, as Al Davis said with the Raiders back in the day, go to San Francisco because you could win a lot of football games, in my opinion, at least. And that's probably how you guys feel as well. Okay, before we keep going, a ton of 49er hats are on sale right now, getting you ready for summer. I know it's cold in a lot of places. That Texas is freezing right now, but hats are going to be coming all the way back to keep that head nice and shaded and nice and cool during the summer. Chatsports.com forward slash Niners hats. Some hats are up to 60% off, and these are all the authentic fanatic stuff. I mean, look at this stuff. So the new era, San Francisco flat bill right now, $15.99. You get the Super Bowl uh, hat from, of course, just a couple of uh, years ago. They got beanies. They got all sorts of really good hats. They got the conference champ hats as well you're seeing a bunch of them flow across your screen right now but again all of them are on sale most of them are up to 60 percent off link down below in the description box chatsports.com forward slash niners hat again beanies right it's, it's not just for warm weather cold weather right now if you're anywhere in the u.s besides florida you're probably freezing right now it's like freezing in atlanta right now so a beanie would look and feel really really good all right, two more names here. Again, I want to educate you guys on some names that you might not know or hear or recognize. How about Troy Hill? Think about it. Where does Troy Hill play? Do you know? He was a Ram this year. He was the starting cornerback opposite of 
Yes, you, you, you guessed it, Jalen Ramsey, and had a career high in most major categories in 2023 interceptions as he's the guy that gets picked on a lot whenever teams don't want to throw Jalen Ramsey's way. He's cheaper and a better option on the outside than some other names on this list because, one, he is young, and two, he's not expected to, to, to go out and command, you know, cornerback number one money, even though he played a lot like a number one cornerback because, again, he was getting picked on a lot by quarterbacks who did not want to throw to Richard Sherman's size. So another name we throw into the hat here in case the Niners need to go ahead and add an outside veteran guy. Here's a guy in the division who would give you some help against the Rams, but also has been tested and battle-proven against a, a lot of offenses just because people don't throw Jalen Ramsey's way. Final name here, I get DM'd about a lot about this name, Desmond King. Of course, first team All-Pro of 2018, one of the best cornerbacks from just a couple of years ago. Another nickel name to mix in here because, again, if K1 Williams wants to go make a lot of money, he can leave San Francisco. you got to fill the void at nickel that he's going to go ahead and leave. King had a weird 2020, right? He didn't have that great of an overall season, but he was traded from the Titans, or the, excuse me, the Chargers to the Titans midseason. That might have had an impact on it. But if you go back the past couple of years, a really good 2018, a decent 2019, and then a kind of an iffy 2020. So, again, Another name and the reason why they get most guys become free agents is because they have had decent play in the past, but recently have not stacked up. Who you hope can go back to like the 2018 play style that you saw from Desmond King earlier on in his career. There you go. There's a list. And there's a lot more. And you always Google like the full list of cornerbacks. These are the names that you would either recognize and want to ask about or some names that you would be like, oh yeah, Troy Hill, right? We played Troy Hill twice this year as 49 with the, you know, with, with the LA Rams. So get you guys up to date. Free agency is coming. March 17th is the start of the new league year when you can sign people. We'll see how many of the 49ers want to sign internal candidates and in-house guys like Sherman Verrett and K1 Williams. If they don't, this list will be helpful and beneficial for you guys going forward. Which of these cornerbacks should the 49 sign. Do you have, a, do you have a, a preference on this list? You could have one, maybe two. Let me know what that is in the comment section down below. Ultimate after today here on the 49 Hours Report, I, of course, don't worry, we're doing a live Q&A Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't be late, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, so stay tuned for that. We'll see you guys in that video. But Ultimate after today, again, on the 49 Hours Report, I'm your host, Thomas Motz, signing off for the rest of your day.